Hi, welcome back to Membrane Function in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, we're going to go over a type of, a specific type of secondary active transport, and this is going to be the lactose transporter. Um, sometimes the name of this enzyme is given lactose permease. It's actually an enzyme coded by the lac operon. And it turns out the lactose transporter, if you just had this protein right here in purple by itself, it wouldn't function, okay? It actually requires a second enzyme, which is a proton pump, which is actually going to use energy to pump hydrogen ions across, or uh, excuse me, it's gonna pump it against uh, the proton concentration gradient. Okay, so one thing I wanna point out here is that on this side, which is the outside, there is a high concentration of hydrogen ions, okay? Down here, there is a low concentration of hydrogen ions. I should put this in concentration. So this proton pump, what does it do? Well, hydrogen ions would not spontaneously flow from the inside here to the outside, okay? Because that's against the concentration gradient. So what this pump does is it uses some kind of fuel and it actually pumps the H plus to this side of the membrane. And it uses the energy from the breakdown of this fuel to ultimately get the protons out here, okay? So it's necessary for there to be a high concentration of H plus out here because it turns out the lactose transporter is gonna use all these protons out here to pump lactose inside, the, uh, inside this uh, uh, compartment in here, okay? So, what does the lactose transporter do on a very general scale? Well, we have all these protons out here. The concentration gradient is maintained by pumping them out here to the outside. And what's essentially gonna happen is we're gonna have a type of symport. Recall that symport is a type of co-transport in which two things move across the membrane in the same direction. Symport S, same S. They both start with an S. So lactose is gonna move to the inside and the protons are also gonna move to the inside and because the protons are moving down their concentration gradient this way, this process would be associated with a negative delta G. It's spontaneous, and so it's gonna couple that free energy release to the lactose transport to make the overall process spontaneous, okay? So how does it actually work on the molecular scale? Well, here's a diagram um, taken from a biochemistry textbook, uh, Freeman and Company. So this is the lactose transporter right here, okay? So we start with a high concentration gradient of H plus on the outside, right? So what's ultimately going to happen is the proton's gonna move into this pocket right here, okay, right there. Now notice that there's a carboxyl group that's deprotonated before the proton moves in. When the proton moves in, that carboxyl becomes protonated. And that protonation of the carboxyl is going to allow this lactose, notice, to move into that pocket as well, okay? And the lactose can only move in once that carboxyl is protonated. Well, it turns out that when the lactose moves into that little pocket, the whole protein changes conformation. They call it an eversion. And when that eversion happens, notice, look at the difference between this shape and this shape. When that eversion happens, then essentially this this lactose can then move inside, okay, can move inside, or we could say it moves out of the protein to the inside, and it retains this conformation, but then what happens also, and that proton gets released on the inside. So what's the net effect? We have a proton on the inside, we have lactose on the inside. This thing right here, don't really worry about that, okay? I think that might actually be a misprint. But the whole point is the proton moves in, protonates this carboxyl, which allows the lactose to move in, when the protonation is in this state and the lactose has moved into the, uh, this binding site, eversion or change in conformation occurs, lactose moves out, and then the proton moves out, okay? So the net effect is you pump a proton and lactose into the same compartment, which on the larger scale is what we see here. Lactose moves inside and protons move inside. Now, if you didn't have this proton pump or you inhibited it, you can inhibit it with cyanide, then all the protons are gonna move in here and there's no longer gonna be a lot of protons out here, the higher concentration will be on the inside. 
Well, that's not really conducive to the lactose transporter because it requires high concentration of proton out here. So if you, for whatever reason, inhibited this proton pump, the lactose transporter would also be inhibited, okay, because there wouldn't be high proton concentration out there because this pump wouldn't be working to pump it back out there. Okay, so the reason this is a type of secondary active transport is because lactose permease, the transporter, requires the use of an enzyme right here, the pump, which uses energy, as in this fuel, to pump the protons out, and then the concentration gradient is used, H plus going through to the inside to move lactose through. Almost always for secondary active transport, the way that the protein works, the, the transporter works, is to use a concentration gradient, which is provided through use of another enzyme, as in the proton pump, which is what directly uses the fuel. In some cases, the fuel is ATP. In other cases, it's not. I believe this is a case where it's actually not ATP, okay? But hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. This is the mechanism of the lactose transporter. In the next video, we're gonna look at a type of primary active transport, which is the sodium potassium ATPase. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and make sure to like the video and subscribe.